continuing coverage of that viral fight involving Cam Newton, the legendary football player. Now, according to two of the men involved in that fight, it was the result of trash talking gone too far. Newton was attending the football tournament against a team he supports, according to published sources, and another team he used to help coach. That's when the coaches for his former team said the trash talking turned physical. The two coaches hope to bury the hatchet and move on. Newton has yet to respond. But how does this affect other athletes? Would this kind of violence prevent them from returning to underserved communities giving back. Joining us for this, discu this discussion tonight, NFL veterans LaMarcus Newman, Jonathan Wells, and sports journalist Jim Hicks. So Jim, you have had a chance to assess, investigate, look at this video. What happened here? Uh, Cam Newton's at a 707 football event, and obviously the smack talking escalated, and his team had just won, and so after the game was over, he got into it with a couple of guys, and now we're at this point, it went viral. Of course, video made it go viral. And now people are sharing their thoughts on both sides of the platform. And LaMarcus, as a former NFL player, your thoughts on this. Will this hurt or prevent or hinder NFL players from going back to the community and giving back if they're getting into fights like this? I don't think it'll hinder any football players, but at the same time, it'll make players think twice about doing it, giving back to the community. I know a lot of players that usually give back and um, works with, got their own 707 team. You have Mike Evans, he has his own 707 team out here in Houston. So you have a lot of players have their own 707 team, but if this keep on going, then you're going to see a lot of players think twice about actually having their 707 team participating in the inner city community. And for those who are not intimately involved to know the details about camps and tournaments. What is the 707 team, Jonathan? Oh, it's basically where you take all your skill athletes and put them together against another team, run 707. Seven. You got your running backs, your tight ends, your quarterbacks. So you're just out there really just throwing the ball around and having fun. So I'm very disappointed to see that this escalated that far. But, you know, sometimes when you're talking a lot of smack, which we do as football players, mm -hmm. things can escalate. So you got to be really careful when you're talking like that. And so are you saying, or I'm asking you, did Cam go too far? I wasn't there. But mm -hmm. at the same time, those gentlemen feel he did. So for any time for that thing to get physical, but me as a former player, anything's allowed when we're on the football field. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I don't, you can't take it that personal where you want to get physical with people, but I don't know what Cam said, but I know Cam is a notorious smack talker, and he probably just said the wrong thing and got up under their skin and they took it too far. Is there any way you can prepare young people if you're working in the community for this? Be prepared for snack, smack talk when you get out on the field I think so I think one of the most important thing is to be able to control your emotions mm -hmm. so even as a football player or even as a high school athlete you have to be able to control, control your emotions because you have a lot of different scouts out there you got people looking at you you got parents you got coaches out there that's looking at you so you don't really want to get too heated and get out of just get out of control especially for those coaches out there what kind of uh, example does they set you know being able to that they going getting out of control and getting into fights and things like that so that that's an opportunity for them but they it looked like they're gonna be losing money you know so people gonna want to go to other teams and Jim how do you make young people understand that that when they go back or professional athletes you know it's not about disrespecting you it's about the game because many young people who may be in the hood they're like this is disrespecting me Correct. and I have to stick us uh, step up to the situation well I mean Cam was in Atlanta and that's like his second home he mm -hmm. has a home there and, and a couple of businesses there I mean if you guys if you ever been to a little league football game smack talking is part of the culture mm -hmm. now it can get too far you don't normally go below the belt you don't and but in this case that game was a championship game Mm -hmm. And obviously, those by Cam emotions living, are high. Yeah, and by him oh. living in Atlanta, them, that, those two teams had been expecting to meet each other in the championship. And Cam, like as as you said, he's a supreme smack talker. <laughs> and I haven't met him personally, but one time, and that was just from afar. But I understand he got up under their skin. That happens now. At the same time, you mentioned respect. 
there's a we've seen several videos where people have have, have lost or disrespected Cam Newton and and just forgot about his resume and what he has meant for our community and for our culture. And that's the thing. Grown mm -hmm. folk got to let the young. Why do you know. think he's? And I saw that reel. They call it a reel. Why was? Why has he been subjected to that? Is it because he gives back so much and he's there as a target? What? Man, this man gives over a quarter million dollars every year just to the team, not, not about the other philanthropic eff efforts that he gives in, this, in different communities. And understand something. If a, if a kid, see, kids, they but emulate who really they idolize. Get to the point because we're running out of time. They, Why do you think they target him? They target him because he was right there. The grown folks were targeting him back. And so the kids okay. will follow. I got Jonathan, go ahead. I think right now we're at a we're at a time where we're at an all-time high of disrespect towards the athlete in general. People get on these computers, they got people making full platforms on calling athletes trash and cool. you know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. a lot of disrespect that goes to the athlete. I don't know why. We've always been a shining example in the in the community. We've always given back as much as we can. But right now these people on the computer will say anything to you. They don't care how they say it, what they say. And I just think that right now people just are very comfortable disrespecting athletes and I hate it. All right. Lamar, your thoughts on well, this? Well my thing is I feel like we, we as athletes are putting ourselves out there, so we're more accessible now because we have social media, because the places that we go and things like that. So being that we're more accessible now, you, like you say, if you're flying with the Eagles, you're flying with the Eagles, but now we're down here at the bottom, so we're more accessible to be able to get talked about and people getting out, getting the opportunity to get in our faces and things like that. So it's just one of them things that, unfortunately, is because of social media. But and I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Do you think it's because of social media? Because yes, they indeed. can get their shine. They can get likes for Correct. going after you guys. Correct. I think it's because of social media. That's part of it. Definitely. Well, the one thing I was happy about is that nobody pulled out a gun and started shooting. Correct. Yeah. So salute to those young men for having enough restraint to at least keep it to a fist fight like grown men back in the day and nobody pulling out a gun and Cam Newton could be gone. I lost two of my best friends, Will Smith, Joe McKnight, to road rage. Mm -hmm. So you got to be very careful when you're going back and forth with these people. You don't know what they got going on in their life. and. Split second, you gone. But Cam right. knew he kept that hat on too. But he kept that hat. I tip my brim to Cam, boy. Hey. Thank we need you to guys find for out. joining us here on the fact on you probably need private security like Garland yeah, Bennett. Up that security yeah. for Garland sure. Garland Bennett to go over there. Go after me, Dustin. <laughs>